Welcome, I'm Pat Kazakov, and today we're talking to Natasha Ulanovsky, who is the musical director and a piano virtuoso and an organ virtuoso for Congregation Beth Israel and St. Bridget's Church. And today we're talking about a series that she's producing called Organ Sounds, and this particular concert is called French Potpourri. Why French Potpourri? Uh, I have a great affection um, to French music. Um, I think this is um, one of the most important organ schools together with German, English and Czech organ schools. And I, I like music by French composers. Also, our organ at Bess Israel Temple is suitable for performing this kind of music. And it what, and what uh, composers are we doing for this French for this po French potpourri? Oh, it will be a large variety. This is why I called it potpourri. Um, starting from Baroque composer Nicolas de Grenier, um, going into the early Romantic César Franck, and then there will be um, Theodore Dubois, there will be uh, Nicolas Lefebvre Velli, and ending with Jean Alain. Who, who lived in 20th century. I'm wondering if the rest of the concert-going population is familiar with them. Some of them are very popular. For example, César Franck and Jean Alain became very popular. Some of them, like Nicolas Lefebvre Velli, is very popular in France because he made a very entertaining preludes and postludes in the church. They sounded like pieces from operetta. Very easy listening. Is this church music because the concert's going to be at Congregation Beth Israel? No, it is not really programmatic. One piece, uh, one set uh, by Nicolas de Grigny actually was um, created for the Mass, for the Catholic Mass. But the rest of the pieces, they just, like for example, one piece is called In Paradisum by Dubois. So Jewish people can go to Paradisum too. Mm -hmm. in paradise, paradise. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Okay. And um, so I will do the march, which could be done for any wedding of any denomination, religious denomination, could be church, it could be the temple. So it's quite accessible. Yes, it is accessible. It is a concert organ music. It and is not a service music. Now you talked about organ. Why is, why is this uh, series called Organ Sounds? Because I think organ sounds, they just make you think about something romantic, because organ is an orchestra of different instruments which are combined in one instrument. And what instruments are typically combined in an organ? Uh, there are different groups. Uh, there is a woodwind group, like we would have an orchestra of flutes, and uh, there is a brass group, like trumpets and horns. There is also the called principal chorus, which made from s steel and zinc. So they, it, they also have some even um, percussion instruments. Now are all organs have these uh, categories of instruments or mm. just your, this particular one? Not all. There are this, in, in most of the churches, very simple organs just to accompany the service, the hymns, but we have concert organ. The Austin organ is the one at Congregation Beth Israel. Yes, this is the Austin 1934 historic organ. It has been recognized by American Historic Organ Society in 2006. Um, we got a special plug about this organ has to be preserved. And actually, several members of the congregation formed the committee to restore this organ to its first original condition has been done in 2006. Is this, to play this organ, this Austin organ, is that different than playing another organ? Um, I don't think so. Same. Uh, the only thing, we have four manuals and the pedal, and some organs have only two. So the organist has to have very long hands and long feet. <laughs> Well, you are, you're a piano virtuoso. You've played in every, I mentioned in my opening that you played in every major international city in the world practically, and you're well known nationally also. Can any pianist just pick up an organ? It takes a lot of time 
I wouldn't say. It also depends on which level. If the pianist just would like to have a job and just play by, by hands, it's okay. But if this is a concert repertoire, then definitely it takes a long time. I, I was 18. I was already a, a concert pianist by 18 when I started to study organ. So and it took me about four or five years until I could do my solo concert. And this organ, the Austin organ, um, people love this organ? Is there something special about this organ besides the fact that it's historical from 1934? I think um, it attracts concert organists to give recitals. For example, last year we had concert series when the organists um, from um, different congregations of Hartford presented their recitals. Krista Rakish, she's in, in the management. She usually doesn't, doesn't play in local organs, but she was interested to play. And we had also organists from Asylum Hill Congregational and from um, St. John Episcopal, St. John's Episcopal Church. So people playing. are attracted to organ music. Um, I think they have to develop uh, the interest of the white public. I think the organists are attracted, but the general public, I would say general public, I think when they're passing by, Press Israel would be nice to check what's going on. Well, I see there. that you have your concert at 645 on Friday night, right, right before uh, Friday night services. Right. Was that intentional? Yes. In the past, uh, I was giving recitals uh, at 7, o'clock, just 30 minutes before the service. And some people, they were just were coming before the service and they thought it was something behind music, just to talk, like prelude music before the service. It was not quiet. So music committee of Beth Israel uh, Temple decided it's better to start earlier and stop 10 minutes before the service so people can talk. So the concert will run from 6.45 until about 7.20, 7.25, and people have who would like to socialize, they can have their time. And what about the concert after the final concert? What is that about? Which final? The con this is the October 13th, oh, but yes. the next concert. Um, there will be two more in this concert series. There will be one concert in February. Uh, I think it is February 9th. Uh, and it will be also an interesting program because I will be playing with saxophone player Max Schwimmer and we will do a special program before Valentine's Day. It is called Duets for uh, Organ and Saxophone. Is that a popular combination? Not at all. Very rare. And we will do actually some new music, contemporary composers. So, One of them. So why did you make that decision to do this very unlikely combination, saxophone and organ? Now, first of all, I don't want to play what everybody plays. Um, I'd always search for new music. And also, um, um, I like saxophone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, That's a good reason. And also, uh, it will be, there will be some jazz music. Jazz music. Some jazz music. An organ can do jazz music? Oh, yes. Best Israel organ can do jazz. I play rag times sometimes, rag times. And they will do actually Devil's Rug, which is really um, crazy ambitious piece for organ and saxophone. And uh, we will do some new works by Russian composer Terry Verdiev, Michael, and by American, African American composer David Hurd. There will be some new compositions. So this is completely outside the box. Absolutely, outside of the box. Right. Yes. And what about having, instead of doing a concert before services, what about an organ concert just separately? Would that work also, this organ sounds? It might, but we didn't give it a try. Any particular reason or? Um, a lot of things are going on in the area, so it, it is Probably people don't know enough about this particular instrument. Maybe it's a good idea. Maybe we'll have to organize. We'll have to, we'll have to discuss. Exactly. We'll That's have right. to move forward. This is right. And um, as far as you're mm. concerned, you've been, you have been the musical director for St. Bridget's Church and Congregation Beth Israel. Um, one is Catholic and one is Jewish. You see a big difference in how the congregations work? Yes, there is complete difference. Complete difference? Yes. And how does that express itself in music? It is a different music. In the Catholic Church, 
most of the music is performed with organ. At Beth Israel, they have a large variety of music. They have a klezmer band, they have a um, Kabbalat Shabbat band, which is a smaller band. They have a lot of con contemporary music, I would say. And organ is playing only for high holidays and for concerts. And in the Catholic Church, um, how does the music? Actually, at St. Bridget, the uh, baby grand piano has been moved to the church only a month ago. So Catholic Church, St. Bridget is starting to include more contemporary music gradually. Um, there is a new pastor, uh, Father Divine, who likes variety of music, and I just hope it, it will be more variety. Well, what, what I'm noticing, correct me if I'm wrong, and I, I heard this in your, uh, originally when you were speaking, that sometimes, like in the, in, the, in the synagogue, we're playing music that the Catholic Church plays. In the Catholic Church, is there sometimes that they're playing music that the that the Jewish religion plays? Does is it go back and forth? Yes, or? there is crossover. I would say, for example, some hymns are composed um, on the tune which is typical for Ahavaraba. <laughs> chant. And um, I didn't see anything composed in, in the Jewish hymnal on the Catholic tunes, but some of them, some of the uh, modes actually, they're just generally, generally European modes and so we use this also. I so think there is a crop. Also, I think what is interesting, the Psalms, the Psalms which are, the, mm, the Jewish congregation is using more Psalms than Catholic. But uh, Catholic Psalms very similar to Jewish Psalms. There are 150 Psalms, and it's very interesting. You weren't trained originally in Jewish music or Catholic music. You were trained as a concert pianist. I was trained um, as a concert. You were trained in Odessa? I was trained in Odessa first, uh, just to be a pianist. And not only concert pianist, I had been trained to be a vocal coach, also to coach singers. So you could teach me? Uh, yes, why not? <laughs> <laughs> why not? Okay. And um, also to accompany singers, accompany instrumentalists, different like violinists and clarinetists. And so it has to be a kind of multi-specialty uh, performer. And uh, for example, teach, teach students music theory, music history, um, and um, ear training. This is why I was hired in the U.S. I was hired to teach singers at Hart School and at CCSU. So we're talking about the concert on October the 13th at Beth Israel at 6.45 p.m. and then the next concert with Max Schwimmer. On February 9th. February the 9th, also at 6.45, also on Friday night, and that's saxophone and organist. And um, I guess the last thing to say is be there. You're going to enjoy okay. it. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. <laughs>